local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Fox 12 Now. I'm Greg Nibbler. We appreciate you joining us. We are live streaming here from the Fox 12 Oregon newsroom. So downloading that Fox 12 Oregon app app a great way to be a part of the show right now though we'll jump right into it we are talking about a series of earthquakes that have occurred off of the oregon coast the first one being yesterday depending on when you're watching this so monday evening essentially and uh, we believe it was around a 5.8 and we'll confirm that here momentarily but since then there have been dozens of earthquakes that have occurred in that same region i want to very much specify here there is no known danger to anyone on the coast there has been no tsunami warning issued there is nothing like that so before anybody gets concerned uh, we do not have any information relating to any kind of a concern for people or structures that being said we're going to get into this and find out a little bit more about this to do so we have brought in an expert lila nodriscoll uh, from the pacific northwest seismic network and i know a lot more than that uh lila and thank you very much you know for being here and i think to give everybody just that context too of of uh how much of an official you are in this area would you mind letting everybody know how else you work with the network and then i know with the university of oregon as well yeah thanks greg and thanks for expressing the level of concern here this is an offshore event indeed uh, yeah, we, I work at the University of Oregon. I direct the Oregon Hazards Lab. Uh, we are part of the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network in terms of running the Oregon portion of the monitoring effort. Uh, and our, our efforts are also folded up into fire cameras and fire detections with the same kind of data collection network from a hazards perspective. Gotcha. So harnessing a lot of that data and assessing what that means and looking at it for this earthquake that happened yesterday. Can you tell us what occurred initially and maybe where that occurred yeah yeah um you know about uh, midnight last night right about then um about 60 miles offshore of the port orford area we saw a magnitude 5.8 strike uh, it was part of a complex fault system that is on the oceanic plate that's well offshore um, and so we you know we've seen a lot of activity over this over the over the decades this is a fairly regular suite of, of fault of, uh, of failures and earthquake sequences um, and since that event, there's been over a dozen uh, magnitude three and higher, uh, approximately, um, that have taken place. Um, all of those fault zones are, are, are under the ocean floor. They're solely located within the oceanic plate, meaning they're not part of the Cascadia subduction zone system where the, the ocean plate touches the, the continental plate and can generate the big one that we all fear. Okay, so these are, yeah, way out into the ocean, um, that deep part there. Now, how you mentioned that the earthquakes do occur out there. How often do we get a streak like this where it was that one followed up by, it sounds like, dozens afterward? Yeah, I mean, this is effectively an annual event. Um, we, we have the well-known Blanco Fracture Zone, which is a, a, a portion where the Pacific Plate and the Juan de Fuca Plate, the, the oceanic plate that goes under the North American continent, uh, those two plates are shearing past one another and regularly generate high levels of seismic activity. And then, moreover, the Juan de Fuca plate is very um, diffuse or broken apart where this earthquake swarm happens. So there's a lot of faults that are subject to failure, and they keep going given the sort of tectonic stresses that are out there, um, both the plate pulling down under the continent and those then the plates shearing past one another. Um, that and the plate being in a fairly weak state, since it's somewhat hot, um, all makes it subject to regular failure, and we see this kind of activity uh, on an annual basis. When you see earthquakes that are happening like this and one of that size underneath there, um, what actually does occur out there in the ocean since this doesn't seem to have an effect on the land or as far as uh, causing a tsunami or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, well, you know, it certainly generates strong shaking close to the event. So, you know, if you're a, a microorganism or a steam fumarole on the bottom of the ocean, you're going to have a bad night and there'll be a lot of shaking over there. So, um, you know, like like a magnitude six we would have on shore, we, we would see, you know, many tens of seconds of shaking in that sense. And then it would it would sort of back off until the aftershock happened and the next aftershock. So it's very much active out in the deep ocean offshore, you know, again, 60 miles offshore. Uh, but the level of shaking doesn't propagate to the point where we feel it on land with any level of significance. And um, with this number right here, does, uh, you mentioned this fault line where this occurred, so not being a danger. Does this have any kind of connection to other fault lines as you go along, whether it's this one or going over to the Cascadia subduction zone? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, in, in this case, no. Uh, the, 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 
Juan de Fuca plate, as I mentioned, is very weak in this in the southern portion. Um, so it doesn't have the sort of the integrity to be able to transmit strength from this area of, of seismic swarm to the onshore system. So there's no real issues about triggering here. Um, but, you know, the, the, the earthquake sequence could sort of extend into the local area where this array of faults are riddled throughout the Juan de Fuca plate. Are you anticipating, I mean, I guess that's kind of hard to say, I'm, I'm sure, but just to ask the question, are you anticipating more earthquakes to continue as they have been since this one occurred? Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, fortunately, um, in the seismic world, once we have a large earthquake happens, there's a fairly reasonably known uh, fall off of the energy. So, you know, given that we had one magnitude six, we can expect to see approximately 10 more fives and 100 more fours and on down through the through the sort of lower levels. So it's, it's very, very regular and normal to have this kind of dozens following a fairly large earthquake, like a 5.8. Um, but we'll see that trail off, and um, uh, one thing we can probably say here is we won't see anything much larger. Uh, it's the fault zones aren't exceptionally long, and therefore can't generate a very large earthquake, uh, unlike Cascadia, which is you know 600 plus miles long. And if the whole thing goes, that's when you can get a big one. But fracture, too fractured, too small, too weak to really do much more than what we're seeing, um, other than just have the ongoing uh, trail off of after aftershocks. When we look at some of the earthquakes that have been generating here over the last couple of months, you know, there was the giant one in Russia that, uh, you know, there's speculation as whether or not some of those volcanoes erupted because of that or not. Um, we've done interviews on that with, with the USGS and other organizations. So you can take a look. Everybody can take a look at that if you want to get into that uh, on one of our previous segments. Um, but I know a question that people will always have is they see that there. They see maybe some venting on Rainier, whatever else is going on, and they, they put that connection together. So when you take the thing about the whole system, is there any reason to believe that, say, that giant earthquake in Russia or off the coast of Russia or anything that's going on in the Cascades could have any kind of extrapolating effect on, on these other regions? Uh, no, that, that would be too much of a stretch, really. I mean, um, it's a good reminder we live in a very dynamic uh, world. The, the, the plate tectonics that are out there are active and vigorous. Uh, we don't call it the, the Pacific Ring of Fire for nothing. Uh, but in this case, um, extending connections across whole provinces around the plate is, is too, too, too much of an extrapolation. So um, we don't, don't look at the likes of Kamchatka or elsewhere and say it's going to trigger us in the Pacific Northwest of the U.S. Um, when it comes to the collection of data, is this a valuable uh, occurrence for you, for the Oregon Hazards Lab, just to learn more about these, the fault lines there, earthquakes in general? Absolutely. I mean, the, you know, the, what we do in the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network is really monitor the entire Pacific Northwest. Um, and, you know, our array of, you know, 550 plus seismic sensors out there um, are always listening. So we, one, learn about fault activity and can characterize the behavior of them. We can also validate the speed and accuracy of our system. So it can really be prepared for those onshore events that are in our area of concern and reporting needs. Um, and then the, the, the richness of the data collected from these events are openly available for researchers. And all of that together leads to multiple levels of, of readiness, uh, of available data, and better understanding of our seismotectonics in the region. Um, one final question, and this is just because I've done some reporting on this and I'm curious, do you think that this earthquake would have been felt at the axial seamount, the underwater sea volcano that's out there? Yeah, you know, this is on the, su the southern end of the, the Cascadia system overall. Um, it, it would not. Um, it's, it's kind of similar to why we don't feel it on shore. It's just simply too far away, and the energy sort of falls off. So it, it only goes out for that kind of 100-mile or so radius, and then there's no significant shaking from there. But um, there are the few sensors offshore that would that pick this up, even on the micro-movement kind of level. Well, Leland, thank you so much. Anything else that you think is important just for people to know about this occurrence or the earthquakes? happening off of the Oregon coast in general. Yeah, I mean, th this is this is always the chance to think, what if this were closer? What if this was the Cascadia? What if we feel the strong shaking when we're on the coastline? Uh, first and foremost, just be prepared. Try you know, have your kit ready, your two weeks readiness. Have your plan. Talk to your friend, fan, your family, your friends, your loved ones. Um, and know if you feel strong shaking when you're on the coast, that's your warning, first and foremost. Uh, anticipate a tsunami. Uh, be prepared, know how you're going to get out of that inundation zone, 
and then um, you know from there you're you're in the best potential situation to to move along. But uh, this is a good exercise of the system. Our our sensors work quite well. Uh, if it were going to be more local, we 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 have a better confidence that the uh, warning system would work well and. Um, just, you know, everybody know this, we live in an active environment and uh, this is good. Yeah. yeah, this isn't the one, but that one could happen. So be prepared and just know what to do in that situation. Now, always great to learn more too, just about this. And as you mentioned, we're in an active zone. I mean, it's from a scientific standpoint, it's kind of exciting sometimes just seeing some of these different things occurring, but to remember, you know, yeah, be safe when that, uh, when that one does occur and listen to to the data that, that you're all presenting to us. So thanks so much, Lee. Really appreciate your time and uh, in being here and uh, letting us know about this. It's, thanks. Thank you, Craig. And for everybody watching, again, this is Fox 12 Now. We are live streaming here. We cover a wide range of topics, but like this occurred, we were able to get an expert like Lee on to talk about that, and we can do that in these situations. And if there's breaking news, this is also the place to go. But we're going to take a break for right now. We do have more coming up this afternoon. And so if you are watching live on the Fox 12 Oregon app, I will be back to talk to you shortly. If you're watching on other places, whether that's YouTube or kptv.com or whatever it be, may be, feel free to check out some of our other segments. I did mention we've got some extensive coverage of the Axial Seamount and some of the earthquakes that are going off and some of the volcanoes in the Cascades as well. So if you want to read some or watch some interviews about that, feel free to do so. Stroll through there. You will find them and uh, take a look right there. But we'll